welcome to the One Up Podcast. I am your host, El Caballo, a.k.a. Tony. Here with some of my nearest and dearest. Got my dog Pucho in the building. What's going on, my brother? Nah, man, just another day living. It's always a blessing. Also in the building, I got my dog Mateo. We're going to have to fire our stage dresser. You see that they left that water bottle in the background of Tony's, uh, <laughs> Tony's recording there? <laughs> It's a so, weird fucking place. Right? That's we a Luca's should, place. We shouldn't have hired those guys from the Game of Thrones uh, last season. <laughs> Failing us. This man's all in my fucking background, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> also in the building, we got Doughboy. Also in the building, we got Doe. DJ Doe. DJ Bro, Doey I, Fresh. How do you consistently get this wrong two years in? <laughs> I like your name the way I like your name. I don't know how to tell you. When? How's your morning going, Dewey? It's good. I got my coffee. Yeah. How would you go place. with this morning? The cold brew. Got to get nice. the cold brew. Isn't it too cold for the cold brew? You don't do the hot coffee when it's cold outside. You still do the cold it, coffee. It'll be zero degrees outside, and I'm, eating, I'm drinking iced coffee. Hmm. I tell them that's, double cup. I tell them double cup me. They put two cups so that you're not holding a, a cold thing. Double cup. On some little wing shit. I used little to wing drink double cups. You used to when you used to drink lean. They always mm-hmm. do like two cups and shit like that, or three cups. And I never really got it, but maybe that's why because it was cold. <laughs> I don't think you get it. <laughs> so it's so you can mix it once you put it in. But I've seen cups. videos of them mixing it, and then they'll mix it right. That cup will get right placed right back down. Then they'll grab another styrofoam cup. Wow. I even seen a because, funny thing of somebody so had like mix it later when they pour more lean. No, the lean is very strong and it burns through like paper and cardboard and like styrofoam. It'll it'll like eat through it. And then people drink that for fun. <laughs> it's it's I mean it's good for uh, when I'm, you have bronchitis. I mean I guess that like uh, like Coca Cola like I've heard that if you put like a bone and submerge it in Coca Cola like the Coca Cola will eat that shit up too. And it cleans so the battery, like, cleans the battery like the pulse on your batteries. It eats that. Acid up, yeah. I'm, build up. I'm just more concerned of the people are drinking styrofoam. Like, if the styrofoam's getting deteriorated into the drink, that's probably what killed what's killing people out here. It's the styrofoam, also, <laughs> silent ki- it's the silent killer. <laughs> okay, it's the styrofoam. They end up getting the lean gut, what's called the lean gut, and it's like lean doesn't process through your stomach very well either. So it makes you look all bloated. There's like an infamous picture of Gucci Man before he went to prison. His fucking gut was rock solid. You were like, what the fuck is in his stomach? And it's lean. That man was lost in the sauce. Damn. Don't get lost in the sauce. I don't even, I don't understand the appeal. You know, man, I was thinking about this the other day with, uh, with like, uh, I saw some movie and they were like doing whippets and like some dude was huffing gas and like all this crazy shit. I don't understand how you possibly get into this. I, I don't. I don't get it. How does one get to that level? I, I've mm-hmm. always wondered. But then I was also a kid. Uh, I was stupid as fuck, like in middle school, and I was trying out drugs that I should not have tried out. Did you ever try huffing gas though? Did your life ever go in such a way that you're like, you know what I'm gonna do today? I'm gonna sit around. I'm gonna watch Dragon Ball Z, and I'm just gonna just huff some gas. I saw two guys huffing paint one time. Mm-hmm. That that was enough to turn me off. It's sad they shit, l- man. You remember that dude, that fo- that famous photo on the internet, the dude gets arrested and his face is just covered in like gold or like silver paint or whatever the fuck it is because mm-hmm. he had been huffing paint out of a bag. Sad shit, dude. It was funny at the time. I was, you know, like a teenage shithead, but that's some sad shit, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't feel no I'll- type of way for them. Yeah, okay. Thanks for your input. Anyways, I always was wondered. Um, I, I would always wonder how, like, Dumbass, with dude. the needle drugs. The needle drugs are scary to me. Because it's like, first you got to stick a needle in you. And I hated needles. I'm like, mm So if you didn't hate needles, you'd be doing needle drugs? Well, if I love needles, then probably I would be doing needle drugs. But I, I'm scared of needles to this day as a grown man. Till this day. Why are you scared of needles? Because they're scary. The hell is a pointy object stabbing you with it? Are you afraid of knives? 
You're scared of knives? <laughs> no, knives like, are not made. <laughs> knives are not made to go, you know, oh. they're not made to kill someone with. Unless you're fucking a Targaryen and then you have that knife. Um the fuck is going on? No, I'm just are saying. People getting killed with needles? No, I'm just saying a needle is made <laughs> to stab you in and in, inject you with shit. That's what I mean. I don't know. I I just got vaccines the other day. You could barely feel the thing go in. You know? it doesn't I still scary. have to look away. I still have to do the thing. Stare at it. I'd be like, yeah, I, I have to I look away. See it go in. No. I'm. It's scary, bro. My mom was like that. My mom, like, she swears that they had to like chase her down the school hallways and tackle her ass <laughs> to like get her vaccinated when she was a kid. She was so scared of scared of needles. She'd just go into fight or flight mode and just she chose to bo- do both. Man, she'd run down the hallways and fight at the same time. I did. I did that once. I embarrassed the shit out of my mom. That's crazy that they used to do. They used to give you shots in school. Mm-hmm. You don't. You've never seen those big shit. ass scars that all our parents have. That like big, like dime sized scar. Yeah, it has like five injections at once. And then some of those people have the audacity to say that vaccines don't work. <laughs> so that I'm like, yo, you got the biggest vaccine of them all. <laughs> the motherfuckers all survived. They didn't get the measles. They didn't get the smallpox. The, yeah, they tripping. That's uh. I'm good off needles as well, but I'm not afraid of fucking needles. Wait, so who? what did you do that you embarrassed your mom doing? You ran down the hallway and fought someone or what? Dude, I went into fight or flight mode. It was it was even worse. It was the little wussy one where they did your finger and then they drained blood through your finger. It was one of those. They did that to me. I said, ah! I just ran. <laughs> <laughs> I was running. All, dude, I actually made it away from people. They were calling me on the overhead in the hospital. <laughs> they lost me for a little bit. And I was in some office in some under some lady's desk. And then the lady came in and she's like, uh, I think there's somebody under my desk. DJ Doey Fresh, please report to the exam room. Yeah. <laughs> so, my poor mom. Well, you and I have been fucking pissed off if my kid pulls some bullshit. Like, I never understood that. My brother used to cry when he got shots. I was like, it's like we about to get a lollipop. It's about to be lit, bro. Like, <laughs> Which <this> one? <laughs> <laughs> Your eldest brother or the middle brother? Uh, Jeff didn't like getting oh, shots. Oh, no. Shit. Jeff didn't like nothing with hospitals or doctors or nothing like that. I'm the same way. Uh, hospitals def that. hospitals like doctors offices definitely make me nervous i've got that i've definitely got that shit where like my my heart rate increases a little bit my blood pressure goes up a little bit whenever i'm like getting checked damn that's, i feel it, like uh, that's the same type of shit that's like you, you, like you study all good you know everything you take a test you get so nervous you bomb that shit <laughs> say exactly dude <laughs> They always tell me they're like, mm, your blood pressure is slightly elevated. I was like, I know. <laughs> I get nervous. I hate this shit. <laughs> like I have to do breathing exercises. They call it a, a white coat syndrome or some shit like that. That's what the uh, the nurse told me last time. Damn. But needles, no problem. Don't give a shit. You can stab me all day. Do you guys um ever, as we're talking about hospitals and shit anytime i go to the hospital i come back out i'm fucking sick even though i didn't go in there they, i went in there for somebody else or whatever every time i come out of the hospital i get sick does that yeah. happen to any one of y'all like sometimes it's pretty, much, it's pretty much been my experience dude i i, I really dislike ho- hospitals yeah shit i is- spent i spent many <laughs> a lot of time at hospitals when i was young and it left a bad, bad taste in my mouth. Like, there's even this hospital smell that I that I can distinctly I know what it smells. It's like the hospital smell. I was I can't, bro. It smells clean and sterile it's and like weird. cleaning products. Yeah, it's weird. It's I a weird smell. St- I love the sterile smell of yeah. some hospitals. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's everything smells so clean. But then there's some hospitals where everything just smells kind of stale, and I'm like. Oh, this is a dirty hospital. It's like a <laughs> musk. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's so muggy in here. What is this bullshit? Now I love 
That's why I love getting shots. Like, I love the smell of when they're opening those packages or when they put alcohol on you. It just smells so, like, I'm about to get the cleanest shit in the world right now. <laughs> just get that clean <laughs> shit for me. That clean, that clean, clean. Inject that clean <laughs> in me, bro. That clean, clean. <laughs> but, nah, yeah, fuck hospitals. I don't really can't deal with that. Yeah. At all. And the bills think, be crazy, too. They, they'll start charging you for shit that if you don't pay attention, there's shit in there that they don't even did. They haven't done nothing to you about, like, certain things, like medical exams or something. They'll be like, oh, yeah, we did this, this, and this. You'll be like, no, the fuck you didn't. And the bill's, like, fucking 10 bands, 8 bands. It's like, fuck out of here, bro. When I have my surgery, oh, my God. These dudes are charging me a fucking arm and a leg, bro. They're like, oh, you know. Brought you back to life type shit. Like, yeah, it don't cost this amount of fucking money, though. The fuck? Should have just left the nigga there. To much, <laughs> how much money you charging me for this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Shit's crazy, bro. Like, people be happy to have a kid and all this, but they don't realize how expensive it is to give birth. How much did it cost altogether, if you don't mind me asking? It's over 10 bands. With insurance. People are saying, oh, you should have not. You ain't coming out of pocket $10,000. For our audio listeners, he's just giving <laughs> Pucho the stare down right now. He's the doing this big old eyebrows. Down. Yeah, it's definitely 10 pockets. 10000 out of pocket, bro. 10 pockets. Man, you fucked up. 10 pockets. Bro. The people were telling me, yo, you should have you should have not gotten married and um, had a kid. And you would have gotten to the States, this, this, and that, and the third. Like, what? I'm like, cool. Because that's what I was thinking about. Let's not get married. Let's just have a kid and then fucking get married. Like, no, nobody's thinking like that. Apparently, that's a thing. Yeah, I don't know. Have I, any of you guys? You're the first person I know of that's paid ten pockets for <laughs> ten bands. He went for bands. the uh, he went for the the upgraded VIP service. He had a concierge. I mean, it was a nice ass hospital, but yeah, I don't think it's a, fuck that. They only brought him fancy sparkling water whenever he would ask for water. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of shit. All right, he had a bed in there. Tony, how'd you sleep? I slept on like the ugliest fucking couch. The it wasn't ugliest. even a couch; it was like a flat kind it of a recliner. I that, wish it was a recliner. That's lit. A recliner that only reclined literally from here to here, but the sides opened up to a bed. Half my body was hanging off of it. I couldn't sleep on that shit. No way in hell. That's but the worst you, part. That's- Beds are not comfortable. Once we got right. to the like post, it was big. So, we had a, a, a friend of the pod, listener of the pod, mm. ask us for uh, co-op game recommendations. That's right. Mm. right. I mean, there's only uh, one co-op game recommendation. I, I want to hear it. It's Deep Rock Galactic, dude. Deep Rock Galactic all day. Yeah, yeah. not on my list. Yeah, <laughs> I. But I, I do recommend it. I just. It, the, the the question kind of seemed like maybe his uh, his girl isn't a, a gamer. Oh, oh. Right. Maybe maybe I interpret it that way, but I I geared some of my games kind of like to for a more like casual experience. Yeah, I would have put other shit on here like Rocket League, gotcha. crazy. Well, although maybe not co-op, but you know it's a team game. Um, but yeah, yeah, I know. I was trying to play Deep Rock Galactic this weekend, but a certain friend of mine. Um, we played like you know, an hour and a half, two kinda, hours. Kind of, kind of flaked on me multiple times. Wow, Joey has the best eye roll I think of anyone on the podcast. <laughs> I um, it's impressive. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed you it. Didn't uh, enjoy shit. I we think- did three missions. We lost the third one. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Listen, Yo, we, that was on Friday. Mission? We never played it again. It feels Damn. so shitty. All right, so my co-op games. I'm gonna put Kiwi on the list. All right. Yeah. Me and Doey's gone ham on Kiwi. I'm gonna have to. It's Google a fun that little one. game. You play these little birds. I think they're called Kiwis. I don't know. Yeah. And you just you you work for the postman. All right. You're sending telegrams. You're putting mail in boxes. You're putting packages and shipping containers. All type of shit like that. It's it's real silly. It's, it's like a puzzle kind of co-op game. You got Race some against the clock type of deal. Cassowary little, action. Got some cassowary birds, action. Huh? Worst mission in the game. Um, it's it's so much fun, Mateo. When you when you have somebody like a friend playing it, you should watch me and, and Bucho playing it. Like yeah, we mostly yell at each other, man. 
Yeah, maybe Sorry. all my games are like divorce worthy games. Like if you play this too much with your wife, you'll get a divorce. Because the next one on the list is Overcooked, okay? Overcooked. And if you ever heard me and Doey play Overcooked, we sound like an old angry married couple. Like we're sick of each other's shit. Why are you there? You keep fucking this up. You know, it's, it's, uh, I told them last night. Fine. I said, this brings this level brings the bad out of you. The worst out the of you. This level I, brings the worst out of you. I saw y'all playing Overcooked yesterday and I was like, man. <laughs> That's tempting, but that game is just us yelling at each other. That's just an argument game. But it's good. It's good. It's Especially so those good. easy levels, it's fun. It's, it's it's nice. Ember, the next game on the list. Ember. All right. Silly little goofy firefighting game, mm-hmm. you know. Play I think up to four, maybe six people. Yeah. But it's nice. Lovers in a dangerous space time. That one is an argument game. Yeah, it's another argument game, but it's fun, right? I think you could play four players on that game. But you could play um, uh, up to, I, I guess you, you could play with two people is my point. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys just control the spaceship and you, you go around the a level collecting shit and then you, you go to the end. It's kind of a simple game, but the ships have like interesting control mechanisms. Like a person can only control one thing at a time so they can yep. fly the ship, control the shields, shoot guns. And then there's like enemies and shit like that you got to kill. It gets um, extra frantic with two people. Like it, it's combat gets a little, definitely rougher with two people stardew valley okay ah. we might have played this a tiny bit but i wish we played more we need you're to get just that a farm farmer going, dude. you're just a farmer you farm shit there's other aspects to the game but you know you, you can play with a friend it's chill virtual vibe sack boy a big adventure all right very good it's another another good co-op game and then um well, probably the best. crazy but huh Probably one of the best. The second Co- one, like yeah, co-op experience wise, like even Little Big Planet, like those are probably it's very it's competitive. It, it's, it has a mixture of everything, right? It's almost perfect co-op. It has a little bit of competitiveness. It's got some you know, colorful and stylish. You can customize the character, and you can just pick it up and go. Like you don't even got to be an expert in games, you know? Yeah, I think for me, what I'm mostly find fun in co-op games though are like working together. And the sack boy game, sack boy, and the little big plan games. Like me and Ever back in the day, we used to play the shit out of. I think we beat Little Big Planet one and two. And by the time three came out, you know we weren't like, you know, chilling each other's cribs anymore and shit like that. But um, those games, it kind of feels like you're playing by yourself next to a person. Sometimes you guys are just like running together, trying to do the challenges. It's competitive amongst each other, but mm-hmm. it's not a lot of like cooperative things. There's a few little like puzzles and challenges and some things you can't even access unless you have four players. So huh. um, and the, the other one I had on here was unravel, which is similar to sack boy. It's a, it's another game. It's a platformer. You just play with two people. That's, I don't know that's- if there's much like, that's the one I was going to say. I think that one's actually a little bit more cooperative than, than the uh, the Sackboy games. Because like you, you put down your little like stitches or your string or whatever to help people up and shit like that. It feels like it's a, a little bit more like cooperative. Yep. And, of course, I'm missing a bunch. But I just put that together in like the four minutes I thought about it. So I would toss on It Takes Two. Yeah, yeah I think but, that's yeah, the one they played. Beat, it, but yeah, yeah, I think they beat uh, that one. A Way Out. <clears throat> Their yeah. other game. Yep, mm-hmm. yep A Way Out. Uh, we've been playing this one called Core Keeper rate lately, which is kind of like Stardew Valley, but a little bit more combat focused. You wake up in this cave and you have to mine, build shit, build armor, all you know, all the normal stuff. Uh, but it's got some weird stuff in there. Corey and I were exploring the other day. We just came across some like just a, a, a cavern full of go karts. So we like drove these go karts back to our base, and our little base has go karts for some reason. Fire, that's a little fire. Big. I got. I got a few. Are you? Do you want to go? Go ahead. You already got say, loaded up. Yeah, all the games I played, especially the first one that changed my life for the game, Terraria. That's number one for me. That's a fantastic fucking game. Um, Minecraft, oh my god! Minecraft, yeah, another thank one. you. How, how did I not put Minecraft on the list? I I've, yeah. I was thinking about it. And I forgot to write it down. Yeah, I've Minecraft and Terraria. It. Minecraft is more casual. Terraria is pretty hardcore. But it, they're both the same concept. You're like mining for shit. You build up weapons, armor, bases, all that stuff. Terraria is more combat focused. Minecraft is more like building focused. B- 
building mm-hmm. things like you know getting cows and making a farm and then getting chickens and, and yeah. you know d- doing all that type of shit Terraria is like you're just trying to build up to fight better shit and then build up and fight more shit and so it's a you know and yeah. I uh, thought of Terraria I just didn't put it because again I was going more for like casual shit but Power yeah. Wash Simulator now Power, Power Wash Simulators their, their multiplayer is a little weak honestly it could they, be they, might, they might be bored. Like I don't see, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't think power wash simulator. I didn't think about it. Fucking fire! Yeah, it is, it players, is fun as hell. <laughs> two players just beat the whole game. Also, yeah. uh, No Man's Sky is another one. It's a good co-op game. I don't. We don't play it that much. We ne- we played like an hour at most. I've never played Minecraft by the way, but I mentioned it because that's like fucking global. Like it's yeah. ridiculous how much love that game gets. Um. The other game you guys played, Pooch, and uh, I think Doughboy too, Mateo. Uh, Valheim, Valheim, Valheim. Valheim's a real Val- good one. Valheim, yeah. I can't. I can picture it, but I can't. I don't know what it looks like. The name of it. It's it's got a little bit for everyone. A lot of these games are the same kind of style, but they the the way that they mix it up is is different. Like Valheim is definitely more combat focused than like Terraria and and Minecraft. Yeah, I mean you can dodge roll. You have different weapon types, and they change how you attack. But they're, then, they're a lot of they're the same concept, but I like the way they remix it a little bit. And then the last game for me on my list, we just played, but I didn't go back to play it with you guys. Grounded. That shit's pretty dope. It's good. Yeah, it's a good that game. game's good as hell. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with Grounded. I, I was uh, really looking forward to continuing that game. I had, I had a crazy-ass armor kit building up. Y'all boys lucky I stopped playing. Let's uh let's get some gaming in today. I'm gonna go <laughs> and ride my motorcycle for maybe oh, 30 minutes or an hour about. after after we record, and I will be free the rest of the damn day. I like That's that. That's fire. Like about that. time you get on that bike. You gonna go on the, the first road? Day it's, the first day it's cleared up, dude. I'm, I'm gonna be in the, on the neighborhood. I, I still okay. don't have this thing registered. <laughs> I don't even get it registered till oh. Tuesday. So like, uh, okay. why so long? I, I scheduled no, DMV Tuesday. appointment or not DMV. I scheduled uh. a tax office appointment, and they were like, our next one is a week and a half out. <laughs> Or not Damn. a week and a half, a month and a half out. A month and a half, yeah. <laughs> so I got some honorable mentions here. Um, I really enjoyed Portal 2's co-op. Portal 2 has some decent co-op That's a in good it. one. And it's like, it's puzzly. So it's like you trying to solve a puzzle together. It's kind of fun. Um, Portal 2 play- is, is one of the best co-op experiences I've ever had in gaming. Like, it is, it's good. You argue a lot because that game makes you feel dumb as hell. Yeah, so dumb. The really? answer's right in front of your face. I loved, I love Portal Two so much. Is is one of the names that I put in the bucket to name my son? Is the one of the robots' names is Atlas? Awesome! Oh, I cool. didn't realize it's that. Atlas and Peabody. I like that. That's fire. Yeah, Portal Two makes me feel dumb. Sometimes I solved like puzzles in Portal Two, and I still had no idea how I actually solved them. I was just putting uh, like portals down, and then it randomly worked. I was like, whatever. <laughs> next year yeah, I, I loved portal 2 so much i just was like a little bummed out that once they introduced those gels the whole game just became like a gel fest and it was like i i wanted more of like the puzzling from the first game but the yeah. story in portal 2 is way better i don't right? think i ever played portal 2 maybe portal 1 but i don't think i ever played portal 2. is it on playstation um it is on know. xbox 360 but it is not on playstation I was about to say, I'll give it a Portal try. Portal 2 is the first cross-play game I've ever heard of. Really? You play PC with PS3 when that game came out. That's awesome. I, I was not aware of I, that. I got another honorable mention. Go play Secret of Mana for an hour so you unlock your first co-op character. And then just do a playthrough on Secret of Mana. Oh, wow. Yeah, true. Yeah, Secret of Mana. You don't even got to play an hour. I think it's less than that. Yeah, it might, it might be 30 minutes if you actually know what you're doing. Or 20 minutes or some shit. But Another... Yeah. Honorable. I got a few honorable mentions. Resident Evil 5, the premier co-op video game, all right? You ever want to fight with somebody, argue with them, play some Resident Evil 5. Then you have Rayman Origins and Rayman mm-hmm. Legends, both which have, like, a decent uh, co-op experience. And both of those games are phenomenal. I've, um, I've got a Pucho thing with those Rayman games. I can't get over how much I don't like the character design on that character. No. And it makes me not want to play the game. I don't think Rayman is a good, look, a good, well-designed character. I don't think he's a good-looking character, and I just don't want to play it. Well, he's missing limbs. You don't like the missing limbs? I don't like the missing I hate limbs. The he, fucking, he just he, the dangling hands. That shit makes mm-hmm. no sense. I don't find um, it that bad. I, mean, I platinum that game, and I put a ridiculous <laughs> number of hours. I, I love, I love that game. That game is fucking fire, but it is not a good co-op game. And I don't know how you could group that with. 
One of the greatest. Resident Evil 5, me and Doe have put like 100 hours in that game over the course of our lives. Fucking incredible. I can't get enough of that game. We'll, we'll replay it again next year. I don't know how to describe it. It's good girlfriend boyfriend co op. It's like you guys are standing together. It's weird. I don't understand. I don't know how to like describe it, but like girlfriend boyfriend co op is a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah, just don't be respecting games that put. I don't like the co op games that are like the second player is a second class citizen. It's like <laughs> one person's Rain Man, the other person's like the fucking goob guy that's like chilling. With, it's like that just feels weird to me. I'm you, not into that. You, you mean like the Sonic bitch. the Hedgehog like multiplayer where exactly. like the other person's playing Tails and you're like, just go kill that shit for me, Tails. You can't actually <laughs> die. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, Secret of Mana, they're kind of second class citizens. They're not the main character, but there's some shit that they could pull in that game that'll be super fucking helpful. Like, mm-hmm. you, they could be healing or that fucking bow and arrow thing. Like, you could have people just killing people off. Like, there's a lot of cool shit. Rayman Legends or whatever, the co-op guy, he'd be waiting for Rayman to do shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm not into it. Yeah. Was the um, last one? I final Dead Space one. 2. Dead Space yes. 3. Dead Space 3. <laughs> Is it Dead yeah. Space Gross. <laughs> I actually tried to recently go back and actually give... Dead Space 3 a uh, run like I'm trying to beat it and it is the biggest garbage heap that I've ever played I was and they just changed the formula so much that it's just not fun anymore heap of garbage yeah I feel like you should be streaming that I should all right we got a link Tedley to the to for to sure section will do, it's we'll do. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good list honestly yeah it's not a bad list I just I'm shocked that <clears throat> He forgot Minecraft. That was like his fuck. That, like, that and Terraria to me was like, damn, how the hell did he forget that shit? Yeah, I didn't forget Terraria. And I also, didn't, I just forgot to put Minecraft on my list. I, I had thought about it. Minecraft was my favorite, one of my favorite games through college. Um, I got it for free through means because of how broke I was. And I played it for a while. Then I bought a ton of copies of that game. Bucho right? was so broke <laughs> that after his PS3 yellow lined, I didn't talk to him for almost years, bro. It was yeah, like just playing, yeah. very seldomly. I talked to him like maybe once a month, but I tried to like reach out and like talk to him. But yeah, That's man, crazy. there was a period of time I almost lost him. You're going to have to buy him a PlayStation. <laughs> I bought him so much shit. He could buy himself a goddamn PlayStation. Damn. <laughs> it's crazy. But moving on to our next, our first topic of the day. 20 question game edition where we all pick one game and we all each have to guess the game in a question form, obviously, to see if we guess it right. I you you that like that explanation? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> he was just trying to find the explanation as he went. Yeah. <laughs> we get to ask the person 20 questions to figure out if we could guess their game or not. Same shit I just said. No. Oh. No, not exactly. Uh, who wants to go first so we can guess? Um, I think Doe wants to go first. All right, go no. ahead, Doe. No. He said okay. no. <laughs> Mafael, do you want to go? Yeah, I can go first. All right. Um, I guess um, I'll ask the first question. Doe has to ask the first question. Oh, Doe? Okay, go ahead, Doe. He's in the top left. That's, you know. Oh, we're doing orders. Okay, that's right. Put your legs on the one-up <laughs> order, <laughs> dude. The one-up <laughs> order. The can, Z. can you level up in the game? No. All right. Um, is this a... Is this game made in 1990? That year. Oh, I'm going to have oh to check that one. God. That is very specific. <laughs> Like in the nineties, like from ninety to fucking ninety nine, like is it? It is definitely in a nineties game. Okay. Wow, <laughs> he said, "Is it in nineteen ninety that year?" <laughs> Damn, and then he I, meant I, the nineties. The nineties. The the yeah. <laughs> he would have told me, "Damn, yeah, it's the 90s. I'm like, oh, okay, now nah, nah, I'm nah. gonna have to pull up the wiki page on this <laughs> game so I can answer what year it came out. <laughs> Go ahead, Pooch. Was it on the Super Nintendo? Yes. Mm. It's your turn again, David. You're on mute, bud. Is it is it a platformer? Yes. Mm. 
It definitely you saw has those platforming. eyes, though? You saw it those eyes? It's not it your has, typical platformer. It definitely does have platforming in it. <laughs> uh, is it co-op? Two people can play? I don't think so. No. It, yeah. No. No. I should have played it through it to like have it a little bit more fresh in my memory. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking. It's the 90s. There's no RPG mechanics. There's no Platform. leveling up, I should say. It's on the Super Nintendo. It rules out like... And there's platforming. Because I was thinking you'd go Chrono Trigger. That's the game I had in my head already. That was the first thought that I had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, fuck. That, it actually changed about 20 minutes ago. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Do you play as an animal? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with yes on that one. Hmm. You're up, Dome. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm so, um... <laughs> I wasn't uh, planning on all the dead space on this. No, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Got to be a little uh, quicker. What is your... Div- I, do you shoot? Is there yes. a... To but shoot. You, you asked if you if he can shoot in the game, right? Yes. No, that's your question? And you're okay. shooting. Yes, you shoot. Like a uh, gun? Shooting? Like a gun. All right. He shoots a gun. Okay. He shoots a gun. Uh, you said it was an animal. Is it? Uh, can we? Can we oh. guess? No, hold on. Hold on. That's my if you get, if get this back to you, you can make a straight up guess if you think you have it. I think I'm gonna have it. This is gonna solidify it. Is this character on a chip bag? On like a is chip he, bag? Is he a chip what bag? Like fuck? like is he is he a character that's on a chip? Like a bag this of chips. Is the one that's gonna get it. No, I don't think <laughs> oh, okay. so. Okay, I'm just saying. Uh, he said it's an animal that can shoot in the '90s. Shit. There's only one game I could think on of. On Super Nintendo. Too. Yes, on Super Nintendo. What, what animal? Oh, the, no, Cheeto, the Cheeto guy game. You could be the Mr. Uh, Cheetos guy. There was shoot. that Chester oh, Cheeto game. I used to God, play that Chester shit. fucking Cheeto. <laughs> that's what I thought. My bad. The, what? What? Is... Those, that's a good fucking game. That's Pucho's turn, by the way. So I'll skip. I think I know the game. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not Chester Cheeto. It's definitely not Chester <laughs> Cheeto. Um, Is he on a chip bag? <laughs> let me see. What question can I ask that will whittle this down? Because I have a question, but it's too direct. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Are you a worm? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an animal, you piece of That yeah, is an animal. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, that's because, a good one. Because mine would have would have been different, but the same. I was gonna ask, uh, what color or is the color pink? Is it, are you the color pink? <laughs> and yeah. So go ahead and uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and guess the game. Guess the game. Uh, earthworm Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better question: Is it one or two? <laughs> it's part one. Yeah, honestly, one yeah. <laughs> Yo, honestly, I thought it was a Cheeto man, bro. Like, I was like, damn, Chester that's a- fucking Cheeto. Too this cool, guy went bro. Deep into the bag for that one. I played. I mean, is that's- he a chip? Is he on a chip? Is, is he, he on, on a chip, chip bag? bag? Is he a bag Can of chips? Like, okay. him ask a question. Honorable trying- mention: uh, Earthworm Jim's blaster. Very cool design of a gun, and mm-hmm. it's on Enter the Gungeon. Probably one of my favorite guns. It, it is my favorite gun. It is on Answer the Gun, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. The, uh, the, the platforming in that game was so much fun. Hit swinging his head around. Did you use it as like an Indiana Jones whip? It was a thoroughly enjoyable game. You fight a cat, right? Isn't like the first boss like a cat or the big bad is a cat? Damn. Those big buff cats? I think are they so. cats? Or those are dogs? The There's some kind of like dude. evil cat demon or something, I think. <laughs> evil cat demon. <laughs> Pretty sure, dude. All right, Doug. All right, who's next? Who? Who's I'll next? Go next. All right. Right. And go ask next. me questions. All right, go ahead, Doug. Start with you. Is it an RPG? No. Is it a side scroller? Side scroller. What is a side no. scroller? No. Okay. 
Was it on PlayStation? Yes. Oh, no. PlayStation 1? Yes. Yes? Ooh. Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. No. That's, crazy. <laughs> That's his favorite wait, game. All right, go ahead. Wait, we asked him if it was an RPG. Did he say yes or no to that? He said no. He said no. He said no. Damn. Is it would have been easy. Three dimensional? Oh. Yes. Nah, that was a long. <laughs> he had a guess, bro. What do you mean? He had to I, was it out. I had to think. These games were weird, you know? <laughs> it's 2.5D. I know. I know what game it is. And guess but it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to guess it. It's your turn to ask a question, dude. Does the game have vampires? No. Damn. Damn. I don't Castle, even know what you're thinking. Castlevania's not on PlayStation oh. 2. Is that is what it? you're thinking? No, it's yeah. a side scroller. Yeah, he already answered. What the fuck it. is a side scroller? Like Super Mario World, the platform. Yeah, well, they just oh. scroll okay. sideways. Okay. He's also the... rule out like them side like a Ninja Turtles game, right? Yeah, yeah, it's all ruled out. Um, is the main character human? Yes. Is it Western? I want to say no, no, it's not Western. Okay. Does the person have breasts? Yes. That's kind of a dumb question because you both <laughs> fucked the fuck. That doesn't help. All right. Um. <laughs> is the game co-op? No. <laughs> the fuck? Do you equip gear? Yes. Is it Tomb Raider? No. Damn. Go, Tony. Is I know. Is it a shooting style game? Because they have a gun. Yeah. Guns. Multiple, okay. God damn. This is rough. And I promise you it's not obscure at all. <laughs> so it's not an RPG, but you equip gear. Multiple and guns. It's sides, and it's side-scroller. No, it's not a side-scroller. Oh, it's not a side-scroller. It's 3D. Okay, okay. Yeah, you asked if it was 3D, yeah. Is okay. it... Are you a ninja? Wait, it's not your turn. Damn. Sorry, That's I thought. Best question. Um, do you use two pistols in this game? Damn, what's a good question? At the same time? No. Now, that'd give you Tomb Raider. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, Tomb Raider. I, I guess. I guess Tomb Raider. He said no. I was um, thinking Devil May Cry. Yeah, me too. Is uh, is it of Asian culture? Asian ninja we, we, assassin? We, oh. Anything like that? No. No. Is this game from the nineties? Yeah, it was on PlayStation One. Oh, I didn't. Oh, you said. Oh, yeah, he did ask, but I'm sorry. You guys are like on question. I think this is. I think. I think we, or I think we might be. I think we might be screwed. <laughs> Come on, the boy. Uh, man, is it Dino Crisis? No. <laughs> oh, I think I know what it is. <laughs> Just had to go for the Hail Mary. <laughs> Go ahead, though. Um, I is uh, uh um, I, this is a lot of stress. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I I can't. I don't want to lose, so I'm like stalling super hard. <laughs> nah, just fucking guess. I think I know what it is, though. Is it? Uh, I don't. Xena the Warrior Princess? Nope. Oh my god. All right. I'm not going to take that as. I said it's not obscure. It is not obscure. So <laughs> <laughs> you're going to skip or you're going to ask? Because I think I know what it is. I skip because I don't, I don't want to use one. This is going to answer my question. Is it 
dinosaurs. Like, does it have dinosaurs to do with it? Somebody asked if it was Dino Crisis, Tony. No. Really... I... Who has Dino Crisis? I was going to say Turok. Okay. Oh, all right. Fuck it. Turok? Turok is Tur- oh, on the Turok's PS1. Nintendo 64. It is on the PS2. It is on the PS2. Yeah, the PS2. Is is Turok the PS2? on the PS2? Oh, PS1. God damn it. So many fucking questions. This is a ridiculous game with Pucho I love fucking... Tony's. Oh, I'm up. sorry. I'm sorry. I picked the fucking obvious PlayStation One classic. I think obvious. obvious, obvious. Go ahead, obvious. No, we're already past our twenty. I think. I think. I think we are past our twenty. Do we? Do we do final guesses or how? Yeah, do we let's do, do this? a round of final guesses. One of y'all should get it if you just find. Oh it. fuck me! Quick, guess the game. I think There's I just guns. had it in my head. It's 3D. You equip equipment. Resident Evil. Wow, Two. thank you. <laughs> well, it was actually one, but I was that's fine. That's, uh, one. that's crazy. Damn. Yeah, there were tits. Jill's my favorite character, you know, yeah. she got tits. That was actually a pretty good one. I don't know how I didn't guess that. For oh, really? You're the Resident Evil expert. That should have been you. That was the doughy think, one right there. Yeah. I think Mateo's is it Eastern? Is it made by an Eastern? <laughs> I was like, mm, like it's a Japanese <laughs> dev, but this might throw you throw you guys for a loop. <laughs> Fuck. Right. Do you want to go, though? You ready or you want me to go? Chester Cheeto. I'm still on that one. No. <laughs> I feel like I don't have a good one. All right, I'll go then. Think of something. <clears throat> All right, go ahead, though. Ask your question. Is it an RPG? No. It is definitely not an RPG. <laughs> is it a shooter? <laughs> yes. <laughs> RPG is way out of the question, though. So come on, though. Watch Pooch guess it on the first try. Did it? <laughs> I want to ask a quick question too, Pooch. Hold on. Are we counting each one, each round as one question, like rounds? Or are we doing one, two, three, like that? Yeah, each, each individual question. Okay, okay, okay. Question. So I yeah. can keep track. 20. Let's keep track of questions. I didn't do a good job. I was. I don't even know if you guys asked twenty. It's probably like eighteen or something. That's good. Um, is it military based? No. Okay, I know again. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Damn. If you guessed it, I'll be upset. Go ahead. Uh, me? Yep. Um, PlayStation 3? No. Is it Western? Like, is it a Western themed? Not like, is it from the West? Oh, no, it's not Western themed. No. Okay. Is it a first-person shooter? No. No. Okay. Ooh. Um, PlayStation 2? No. Wait, so you asked, what did you ask the first time? PS3? Yeah. Okay. So it's a PlayStation 1 shooter. Or PS4 or 5. Or PS4 or 5. Game. Yeah, that's fair. Or it could be on Xbox, right? A, is it is it cyberpunk? No. Is there platforming? It is a platform. How to think there? Yeah, it's a platform game. Can I ask what console it's from? That's gonna no, be yes or no. no you have to pick a. Uh, yeah, you have to. It's yes or no. Tony, what game is it? Uh, can I ask what game is it? It's Cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> Got it in one. Um, <laughs> the character you're playing with is human. No. It's oh, a interesting. It's a very good yeah. question. Is it futuristic? No. What? It is not futuristic. Define your d- futuristic. Like, what do you mean? Well, like, like, cyber, like cyberpunk super, shit? No, he's saying, like, are there, like, super unrealistic guns or maybe no, time machines no, yeah, or no. flying aircraft? Okay. Nope. All right, cool. That eliminated the game I had in my head. I had, um, uh, as I'll say, I had Ratchet and Clank is what I was thinking. They, that so was my like first option. You got option, guns, you're no. an animal. 
Yeah, no. But, um... Ooh. Hmm. Fuck. It's like five right now. Not a first-person shooter. It's it's not a first-person You're an animal, shooter. and there's platforming. I hope this little entire like episode section is just like people yelling at us because we they're like it's so obvious what this shit is. Yeah. <laughs> and he said it's not on the PS2 or the PS3. And you're an animal, right? Right. <laughs> He's talking about Metal Gear Solid so Snake Eater, but does... he only played it with the alligator hat <laughs> he on. Played it with the alligator hat. <laughs> does Microsoft own this um this character or this this game <laughs> yes okay. they do I now guess. for sure yeah david it's an animal that shoots guns there's some platforming and microsoft owns this animal so wait it's <sighs> And it's not on the PlayStation. It's original it's not Xbox on PlayStation. Or he Xbox. said it's owned by Microsoft now, or it's owned Xbox by Xbox yeah. 360. Come on, huh? What? What'd you say? I'm asking: Is it on the 360? Is it on like? You get well, you it, get one question. Yeah. yeah. Just say: Is it a Microsoft <laughs> is it on the game? Xbox like, 360? Like, is that your question? Yeah. No. Do you play as a bear and or a bird? It's not Banjo Kazooie. No. I, I didn't know if you were like really Conker's stretching. Is Bad Fur Day? Correct. That's exactly what it is. I didn't, That's a good I didn't, one. Is That's Rare a real owned by one. Microsoft? Yeah, now they are. Okay, now yeah. they are. That's okay, I was right It came then. out on the N64 it. back in the day. But. Yeah. I was wondering, was someone going to say like what game genre? I was like, no one said it. Like you got to ask Dates. Dates would help you guys out so much. All right, Doe. Yeah, I don't know why Doe said, is it on the PS2? Is it on the PS3? Is it on the... Like, like <laughs> why marry yourself to a console? But but as soon as he said no PS2, no PS3, I was like, all right. That probably dates him as, like, the 90s or, like, the recent 2000s or whatever. Like I've mentioned 20, it before. Like, this aunts. is one of my favorite games from back in the day on the 64. You got I yours uh, ready to go now, Doe? All right, I'm, it's just gonna be terrible. Oh, just, it's gonna just be, pick a game. It, it's gonna be super esoteric, or it's gonna be like something that nobody can guess, or something that anybody could guess. Just I'm like, pick a game. there's no middle place for me. Just pick a game. What was Mateo's game? <laughs> Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim. <laughs> right. Yeah, I Go picked ahead. Resident Evil. It's like one of the most All popular right. game series, ever. and it almost stumped us. It almost stumped you guys. <laughs> like, I don't know, just pick a game. All right, All right go um, ahead. I got it. Is it enter the... I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beast. Um, is it a platform game? Nope. Okay. Oh, okay. Is it a shooter? Nope. We need to add some music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Um, you know some Jesus. podcasts have like background music going the entire time yeah. i don't know if that's cool or if that's annoying though our boy felix almighty the the mm -hmm. king felix podcast sorry when you say is it a shooter do you mean like do you shoot guns at all or is it i mean first I, I was i was thinking like first person shooter is how i meant my question uh okay well then yeah the less i can give the better so yeah it's not like a first person shooter okay Right. Are there dialogue options in this game? No. No. Okay. You got to think that hard. I'll, cool. I'll go to cool now. Um, is it on a handheld device? No. That's a pretty good question right there, honestly. Fucking eye rolls. <laughs> <laughs> he looked right? in one direction and then rolled it all the way back. <laughs> He's like trying to throw a Hadouken. You seeing that shit? <laughs> Do you level up? So it's definitely an old. Not game. not in like a traditional sense. No, no, not like uh, no. 
Right. Like in Metal Gear Solid, Snake goes like, woo, 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 and gets more health up there. I, I would say that's not a level up. Yeah. It gets more health. Oh, they used to be like, I want whatever that guy's eating. He's just getting stronger. <laughs> Not a shooter, no dialogue options, not an RPG, or sorry, not a platformer, no level ups. Is it a puzzle game? No. Jesus, fuck. Jeez. Um... Is the game... How can I word this so I can get multiple answers in one? Is it playable on any of the Sony game consoles? No. Okay. Damn. Uh, Did it come out before 2000? Yes. (laughs) Okay. Hmm. I think I know where to go with this one. Yeah, me too. I'm trying to think. How do I ask the question? It's, you it's don't not level being, up in the traditional sense. No, not, not mean? like not like there's no bar. There's no level yeah, two, yeah. no level three. Mm-hmm. But. Um. Are you like, fuck, how do I want to ask this question? I have a game in mind. I'm (laughs) trying to ask a question. Do you create like units of some kind? Yes. Damn, you just fucked me up with that one, Pooch. Create units. Are we going with a, is this a strategy game? Yes, sir. Oh, that wasn't a real question. <laughs> that was the <thinking laughs> oh, oh, no, no, I mean, you're next, right? No, no, I'm no but, but, but oh, that, could be, that could be my question. That, that's yeah, fine. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, it's a, well, you said it's a strategy game, so it obviously has to have puzzles in it. No, no so puzzles. No puzzles. No puzzles at all? Oh, whatever. That's my question, then. Fuck it. Go ahead, Booch. What Bucci. the fuck? Is it that was already That was already asked. No. But you ask another one because that was already asked. That was already asked. It's not civilization. Yeah, I asked it was okay. A puzzle game. Fuck, it's not Civ. Um, is it on the Nintendo consoles? Hold on, because it may have. This is my have... favorite part when we all have to uh, look up. Like, yeah, because shit. but if it's so obscure, then I don't know if I should add it. I pulled my game. I pulled up Wikipedia just so I know if you ask a question, I'm not gonna throw you off. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does not look like it ever came out on any Nintendo. Okay. Was it, oh, uh, yes, it did, but it only came out on one console. Was but, it released? So I, was was it was it was it, was it uh, developed by Blizzard? No. Close. You're getting there. It's almost super hot. I'm not getting there. Yeah, you not- you guys are so close. It's adjacent. I didn't want to pick something so easy because Blizzard no, would have been fine. like right there. We're like question 10 or 11 right now. I think you're way think. further, but okay. Because I'm, I'm keeping track how many times I asked the question. How many times did you ask a question? Either 10 or 11. How many times did you ask a question? I asked 10 questions. Either okay. 10. Yeah, I can't remember if it's 30. 10 or 11. <laughs> how many questions have you asked? <laughs> I just said I can't remember if it's 10 or 11. Ten There's no way you 11. asked 10 questions on Doe's Go. What the fuck? <laughs> I think so. Whatever. Yeah. I can't with this guy. We're, we're just Thirty can. questions then. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's holy. Fuck. It's right there. Does it have the word command in the title? Yes, it does. Right. Oh, never mind. We're definitely not <laughs> out of time. It's the game called He's... Command Center. I'm kidding. Command and Conquer. <laughs> yeah, Command and Conquer. Okay. Yeah. I would Damn, not you have ju- gotten that. You just went with ba- with playing Command and Conquer, not Generals yeah. or anything. <laughs> no, just the re- regular Command and Conquer. What game did that come on a Nintendo? What console did it come on a Nintendo? Nintendo 64, 64 I think. Yeah. Really? 
never yeah. fucking played that game. Yeah, it, it, like StarCraft, I think, had a limited release also. on Nintendo 64 also. Yep, StarCraft 64. That's why That's why I asked that one. When you gave that answer, I was like, StarCraft also released yeah. in 64. <laughs> I think one of you guys, when I did mine, I think one of you guys are asking if it's like futuristic because I think one of y'all were thinking StarCraft or Star Fox or whatever it was. I thought it was Star Fox for a second. I thought Doey was going to go with Bayonetta. I, I thought I was going to be I had no idea how to get to Bayonetta. I've never yeah. played any of those games. <laughs> uh, there we she go. have tits. That's yeah. how you... Look at the Cheeto man, the bag, the Are man on the bag of Ziggle chips. Bitties. The, yes, okay, it's Bayonet. No, well, I should have gone with the Cool Spot game, dude. What Cool Spot game? Tony would have got cool you. Spot he was game. going food themed. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, is it on the bag of chips? Is it on a can of soda? The Pepsi Man game. <laughs> no, Does he eat cool, spinach? Cool Spot is the Pepsi game. I think is it's it, the Pepsi game. He's I some it was kind Seven of, Up. Oh, wasn't there also a Seven Up game? Or was that the cool spot? <laughs> I thought cool spot was the seven up game, but there is a oh, Pepsi. He might game. be. It's yeah, a Pepsi cool. man. You're a Pepsi man. It's like a runner. You have to dodge stuff. Oh, it is a runner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the cool spot is the mascot for the brand Seven Up. I didn't realize Seven Up had a had. What a, happened to a Seven mascot. Up? Do you, have you guys seen a Seven Up? I haven't seen a Seven Up in years. The I'm actual. A Sprite, I'm a Sprite man more often than I'm a Seven Up. I've man. seen Seven Up in Publix, I believe. I don't drink white. Should we make Seven Up the official drink of the One Up podcast? Yeah, <laughs> I don't <laughs> drink white. Yeah, let's make it. <laughs> you can just ignore all of this. It's fucking... like it's like the Juggalos. They have Fago. We have fucking Seven Up. Mm-hmm. Jeez, the fuck is Fago? Why go One Up yourself and you can go Seven Up yourself? <laughs> Yo, Pucho, all I have to say to that question is whoop whoop. You whoop, don't know whoop. what Fago is. Whoop, whoop. It's those big ass. We should become a juggle podcast. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Be jugs. All bit hatchman tattoos on us or whatever the hell it is. Yo, they said mm-hmm. when the world ends and you're at heaven's gate, they're gonna be like only juggalos can enter. You picked the wrong religion. Doy, would All you go right, to the well, gathering of the juggalos? As I've been doing a, I up, just learned what a, a fago is. I've never seen this drink in my entire life. It's like I've a had fake ass before. Ritz. It's, all, it's all right. That's what I that's what I classify as a fake ass Ritz. You know how those Ritz bottles, the big ass Ritz are already a fake ass something. It is, but I'm saying I think that's the fake version of that. Also, where the fuck did Ritz get these thick ass fucking bottles from? I don't know if you ever what seen is, it. They're, they're not normal. three liter bottles. Them yeah, fat bro, they're shit. fucking like. Jesus. That, that that top was like that big. That's what a is one Ritz? Up. <laughs> it's a soda. It's a soda. I don't think I've ever seen that brand. Are they just like a Publix only brand or something? I don't know what store I've seen them in, but they're a one up of regular two liters. It's a three liter. <laughs> That's the definition of one up. Joey, let's go to the gathering gathering of the jugglers next year. I will, I'm so down. Isn't it? Doesn't okay. that go? <laughs> Doesn't that go with the that band, uh, Insane Clown Posse? I, ICP? ICP, dude. Yeah. Is that where it originated from? From them? Yeah, yep. those that they're the. I think I'm pretty sure they were the first like Juggalo band. Damn. Okay. What I is a Juggalo well, band if not them? I, I've never heard of that term. A I have. I think there's other Juggalo bands. Uh, one of there's a who the hell is it that goes every year? Is it Ice T that goes to like the gathering of the Juggalos? I'm not too I sure. I, I think I saw a video where he got like hit by a fish. He threw an entire ass fish on stage. I should wow. tell you everything you need to know about Juggalos is that they carry <laughs> fish to concerts. That's yeah. just maybe, he, maybe he caught it fresh that morning. Um, Juggalos. All right, the, Tony. The, the ICP. All right, well, so what? Right. ICP guys were on a podcast, and um, one of their fans had gotten the outline of their. F- you know makeup tattooed on his face and it ruined his life and they're like yeah that why do you think we paint our face with fucking makeup <laughs> like we fucking with this fucking you're a fucking idiot and they were like shaming the shit out of this ultimate fan they're like yeah of course like you that shit is gonna fuck up anybody who does it why do you think we use paint <laughs> That's all right well wild. boys for our next topic a little bit uh Different uh, vibe, different energy. But Trump's back at it again. 
he's um out here in his rallies talking um saying some shit you know especially about uh his main thing is killing drug dealers no trial type shit just bringing them in quick clean getting them out of here um one of the craziest Basically, he he visited uh the Philippines when he was in a president and he really liked president Duarte's uh, how he was dealing with drug dealers in the Philippines was basically like public execution and like just murdering these people all together. That dude from claimed the lowest- that he he claimed that he rode on a helicopter or something. Not not Trump, but Duarte claimed that he rode on a helicopter and he they kicked drug dealers out of the helicopter. Some crazy shit like that. Weren't, weren't you telling us about that, Pooch? I, 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 I haven't thought, heard of that. That's crazy. That's <laughs> and I, I swear there was something about like someone getting pushed out of a helicopter. I'm what gonna have to fuck? look this up so I'm not just making up shit. They pushed yeah. somebody out of a helicopter in Scarface, but it was a drug dealer. Yeah, it was a drug, drug dealer, dealer pushing out another drug dealer. Yeah. Recently in Brazil, um, the you know the guys on mopeds that they will they'll ride too deep. One person will be the jacker, the other person's the getaway. Those people, um, the police said if you shoot or kill these people while if they try to rob you you're not going to be charged or pressed and there's like now there's like entire compilations of people like waiting to get robbed by these people and then like shooting them first like a a blacked out window and they'll shoot through the window and kill these guys and it's oh yo there's videos of them cars just seeing that they're robbing people and just plowing into them with their cars and shit like that what? Um Pucho Pucho saw one of the videos. He it was a, a police on a bike and he gets off the bike and he just starts shooting the guy on the ground. And it's just like it's open season now on those people. God damn. Yeah, Philip here's a here's a headline for y'all. Philippine leader says one he once threw a man from helicopter, would do again. Damn. Okay. <laughs> That's nuts. So just to That's be more um, just to clarify a little bit more on what Trump said, he's specific- Specifically saying he wants to wage war on, on the cartels and to stop this fentanyl killing. He's saying that it's killing like 200,000 Americans per year. And these are his words, quote unquote, not mine. Um, and that uh, he was going to ask for legislation to ensure that drug dealers and human traffickers who are terrible, terrible, horrible people get this swift killing. Um, I don't. So, so, like, as a statement, right, without adding the crazy second half of that, yeah. the first half of it is, hey, we should introduce some legislation legis- legislation to uh, try to get rid of the cartel or limit cartel activity and stop the influx of drugs. It's like, all right, I don't think anybody dis- should disagree with this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Like, I, right. I don't think that it's the number one concern, but I think you can be concerned about multiple things at the same time, right? Right. Yep. It's, I'm fine with so that. So, just that first half, though. Now, add the fact that Trump is saying it. It's like, well, what is his proposed solution? Is he tr- is he tr- going to try to build the second wall to wall them in? He got the first wall, then he get the second wall, and then the, then what? He wants a firing squad to sit on top of the wall. Like, I, I don't know what his proposed solutions for these types of things would be. But I mean, what he's saying uh, at rallies is that it should be the death penalty. There should be we should introduce the death penalty for drug dealers, which is crazy 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 to me it's it, it'd be like uh i don't know dude they, they they could start we could start looking up stats on like how often speed is a factor in uh in vehicular manslaughter on the road and be like okay if you speed you get killed we shoot you on the side of the road you get pulled over you get one warning done i think um in some aspects right i kind of i kind of agree with uh, it's hard right because what like because he's saying drug dealers and traffickers, right? And he's mentioned fentanyl. So these are like super hard drugs that are killing people. If I'm a drug dealer and I'm selling fentanyl, I am killing people. Quote unquote, I'm not I'm physically not like killing them. They're taking a drug that I'm selling. But you can and this is an argument that you can start too, right? You can say, like, well, people who um sell alcohol, that kills people, right? Not as quick as fentanyl. But, you know, there's, there's a bunch of little rabbit holes, or not rabbit holes, but little arguments you can have. But what I agree with is, like, fentanyl is killing a lot of people. 
Is it the drug dealer's fault that these guys, these people are looking for drugs and they want that? No, but I mean, is this his fault that he's give, he's supplying these people with it, right? So yeah, if he's killing hundreds of people, why not give him a death sentence for selling that? You know Should I mean? we kill all the people that sell like fast food? Because like the leading cause of de- death in the U.S. is heart disease, heart Oftentimes disease caused by obesity or or just eating bad and shit like that. It's like. Yeah, that's should, what I'm saying. Should you should run around <laughs> to giving all these all the McDonald's? Hey, welcome to McDonald's. How many? Blow! You just taking them out like one at a time. It's like, nah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what that? That's why I was saying. Like, I was kind of agreeing with it, but, but there's gonna be issues where people are gonna like that example. They're gonna argue, like, oh, okay, well, you can do this to this person too, or this or that. But I mean, if like and then him trying to say wage war among the cartel, like, what do you do? You gonna go? over the border and fucking start a war like because well, I, mean, I mean i think it, it'd be meaningful it, i think that's the only meaningful thing he said in that entire because it, it's there's an there's an issue south of the border um and yeah they the cartel is a really unfortunately it's a huge issue it's why a lot of immigrants continue to come to um america and i think uh it's our neighbors to the south and if they need help we should help them out i would i would i I mean i definitely agree with that i don't think that uh i don't think you can wage war on the cartel though right like did did we beat the taliban did did we did we have we killed like extremists Did we did we won that war did we win the war on drugs no because you're fighting against like basically an ideal like it's not like uh it's not like a like a single standing army or anything. You're fighting against this scattered group of things, and you're not going to win. You have to rethink how you're going to fight that. No, and for sure. Crime tends to be an economic problem, right? So, like, there's got to be other solutions to this. Yeah, I think one difference to my understanding is that, like, wow. You know, like the situation in the Middle East seems to be like a religious extremism issue, mm-hmm. whereas cartel stuff seems to be, of course, there's a lot of dynamics involved, but it seems to mostly be monetary, like a way to make money. Mm-hmm. I think if you go up there and start fucking shit up, like how long would it take for them to keep fighting that fight if it's just money that's the motivator? It's like, if you're stopping them from making money, then it's like, is this worth doing? Like, I don't know if they'll think so logical about it like that, but um, I don't know. I, I could I could see things playing out differently as well. Like, I, I don't know if going down there and trying to wage war with the boogeyman is, is the right approach, but like, you know, trying to hurt somebody's pockets when their main motivator is money, I think can be effective but. and I mean, also, you're talking you're, you're talking about like groups though that like in some of their local communities like they are they're not necessarily the boogeymen because they are like the source of income in that little town and they're you know it's like uh like the old school gangs back in like the u.s they did social work projects like they built shit for the community and they handed out food and shit like that and they also were like slinging drugs and had their own like turf wars going on but I mean that that's there's it's hard to fight something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I just, when I said the boogeyman, I meant like it's not like you could like it's not like waging war on Mexico. Like there's a standing government and a thing you could attack. It's like the cartels kind of nebulous. Like where are they? Where are their bases? Like like you're it's kind of like fighting a ghost almost. Like you know you gotta mm-hmm. there's a lot of intel involved. There's a and then it's like you know you destroy one place, another somewhere else they crop up and it's like. It, that's what I meant. It's like those type of like guerrilla fighting is like difficult, you know. Mm-hmm. Not, not, yeah, maybe and not the, boogeyman in the the bad sense. But. And oh, also, I, 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 I was, I was right there with you on how, on how you meant. It. And also, too, I don't think that uh, cartels are trying to sell a drug, right? And this is this is me just opinion, right? I don't think they're trying to sell a drug that stops them from getting more money. Right, I think the people, it's like the lower dealers who adding these extra shits and, and not doing it right because what a drug dealer wants is a reoccurring fucking person. If they're killing off these users, you know, that's not, that's bad for business at the end of the day. So, I mean, really, all you're really doing is just getting the low-level drug dealers who don't really know how to mix it or how to do anything. They're just trying to get something to hook people up. And um, that's who you're really going for because, honestly... Fucking, how long has cocaine been around? 
that shit ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? So I don't really think at the end of the day that drugs fucking are going anywhere, bro, because it's just too many people in the world. I don't know. I don't know how he... I, don't, I really don't understand his plan on this other than just controlling it in the States, but... Yeah, I... The... The drastic punishment feels... Um, like, I don't know if it'll have the intended effect. Like, you start giving people the death penalty. Like, you think the drug dealers are going to just stop dealing? Like, I think the people that are really in charge are going to be unaffected by those types of policies. Yep. And then I think you could always find young, poor people that to sell don't enough. really got another way to, you know, sell drugs. Um, yep. You need cash quick. You're like, just I'm just going to sell it. I'm just going to sell this one time. Make a quick, like. Get hooked quick on couple it. thousand dollars or something and then you're you're in I it. think i think a major part of the issue with what he's saying is like a lot of the times people get addicted from like the doctor prescribing one too many percocet uh referrals and you get xanax and stuff from the doctor and you start to abuse it and i'd be like you have to put all of these people away too right if they're killing people and, and overdoses, especially in the 2010s and the 08s, and there were pill mills in Florida, and that shit goes all the way up the line. Uh, you're talking about CEOs that should be getting the fucking death sentence and shit like that. I think I think if I think the uh, I think the problem here is is that you got to decriminalize drugs before you can even start to do anything. Um, I think you got to start at decriminalization and then I think you got to start creating healthier options for drug users like so that they don't have to go through the background. Also, places to get high and shoot up. That's also another reason why those things are there. So if you do get a bad batch of drugs, you're in an establishment where they can put Narcan in you and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think people should i think drugs is 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 one of those things that are going to be around forever i don't think we're ever going to see a world where there's zero drug usage i think that's the human nature is that we're very addicted to things and anything can be our drug really right mm -hmm. yeah there's but, cigarettes there's liquor there's coffee yeah. there's everything's kind of killing us slowly <laughs> you know what I mean? It just depends what your vice is. I just old old, uh, old Neanderthal man. He had some kind of root or something. He would pop in his mouth and chew, and it would give him an upper or to get him stoned or something. Drugs have been around since forever. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think you have to de decriminalize them completely. I don't think that whole war on drug shit. I don't think that shit is even a real thing. When they decriminalized pot in the city, it was like, what the fuck were these mother? They were harassing us before, like, and it just seems like not. It was almost a non-issue afterwards, and it's like, damn, if it really. It is not hurting anybody. You're smoking outside and shit like that. Um, used to get in trouble. Used to go to jail. Used to get fines. Used to get summons. And now you can smoke freely outside. And it just feels like a farce. I've got a question for you, Doey. Um, when I, the, one of the last times I went to New York and I was a smoker. And I would be outside smoking. I would get a lot of dirty looks and things like that. Cigarette or? Yeah, c cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you, is there still that like are you, is it more frowned upon to smoke a cigarette around someone than it is to smoke like a joint or something no or? no <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know maybe you were around some snobby motherfuckers but like cigarette smokers Man. are you know it is what it is you got your vices everybody vapes now kind of so like but That's people still terrible. smoke people still smoke cigarettes and shit i don't think i think there's less shame for it now because them everybody's train, them train vapors be getting looks though <laughs> yeah <laughs> you vaping on the train be like, yeah not Fuck only that know. um also fulcrum the yodi land guy he does that he vapes inside of establishments <laughs> shit like that um there was that one girl who sparked up the cigarette on the train and i kind of beasted it on her so yeah maybe maybe it depends on where you spark these <laughs> things up you know what i mean but I, maybe you'll get looks but it is what it is man everybody has their vice yeah, but For, fucking cigarettes one of the worst though, man. That shit a is stink as fuck. Like that shit stays on you better than cologne. They need to, cologne companies need to go holler at tobacco companies and be like, "Yo, how do you get this fragrance to stay on you so goddamn long?" 
Bro, Tony I don't know here. what it is about cigarettes, bro. Like, Here's a fun thing. I wore a shirt uh, yesterday that I hadn't worn since Deadwood. And when I went on De- when I went on the Deadwood trip, I smoked a couple of cigarettes, right? So this is like one of the last shirts that I smoked cigarettes on. I hadn't smoked for like months before then. I put this fucking shirt on. I watched this shirt like twice since like the Deadwood trip. It's like a you know long sleeve flannel. Like it's one of my thicker shirts and it was cold down here. The shirt still smelled like fucking cigarettes. Bro, like what are they putting in a cigarette to make it still smell? Like that's what I need in my cologne. I want that shit to last forever. Like it doesn't make no sense. Like cigarettes are just bad, bro. I, it's just smoke though. Like mm-hmm. if you if you ever been to a fire pit, yeah, you, you'll smell like a fire pit for yeah. a grip. Like mm-hmm. later on, it'd be a week later. I walk around my house and I still catch whiffs of a fire pit. I'm like, get the fuck out of here! Where is this shit? Um, yeah, I find even your hands. Oh my god! If you ever like oh. smoke a cigar or something like that, your hands will smell like smoke for a while. I find that washing, literally using rubbing alcohol on my hands for like you know thirty seconds or so, is the only thing that'll like reasonably get that smell out of my hand. So you could still always spot the old smokers too. They had those yellow, like the yellow fingers, like in between where they would hold their cigarette. Oh yeah. Yo, Doug, yeah. let me ask you a question. Since you know, mostly Trump's thing is like war on the, the drug dealers. But what about the users? If the users get caught, should they do time in prison? I mean, I think he's. I think what? How do you determine who's a drug user and who's a drug dealer? You can. You 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 know a user. You know a user when you see one. I don't know. I don't think that's true. The fuck? Bro, I've walked down the streets of New York with Doe, and he'd be like, yo, this nigga's a druggie. You can look at him, and Doe be like, yo, that's a druggie. Watch out. Yeah, but those people are like, they're like fucking hooked. Yeah, there's hit, plenty visibly, of people that, uh, yeah, there's plenty of people that are just going to use a drug a couple times a week or a couple times a month. It's like, you or people that like to buy marijuana in bulk. Things like that that are so, like, I've are they a drug dealer or are you? I don't think a I don't think druggy. Oh, well, not that word. Yeah, that's though. a fucking not that old word. man. That's that's a, that's that's a, a, not that druggy. word in particular, but you know what I was trying to get at. It wasn't. But I'm saying like, even I don't at this point I don't marijuana is not a drug. Like that shit is to me is not a drug, bro. At all, like that shit's normalized. It's almost, a drug. What are the, what's the definition of a drug? Anything that's, like, made in a lab, right? Chemically made, fucking mixing and all that, right? No? I'm going to look up the definition. Shrooms be growing in the ground and people eat them. I don't think cocaine takes any lab processing. I think it's just something with leaves, but I've never looked into it. Cocaine, they do a lot of shit. They do a lot of chemicals. Do they they have to do that to get the... uh, Because I thought that you could just, like, chew on the leaves and that shit would get you high. I think it might, but I mean, to extract the powder out of it, they do a lot of shit and add a gotcha. lot of different, like, acids and things like that. Ah, okay. I think it's just things that are mind-altering substances or drugs. Or introduced into your body, yeah. All right, that's not correct. I think marijuana is a drug. I think alcohol is a drug. I think tobacco is a drug. Um, Like, there are legal drugs and there are illegal drugs. And my thing so he's is saying too, that he should that that we should just make all drugs legal. He's bugged out for that shit. I feel like that's like a little crazy. Like I think that's too far. No, but um, I, on the same end, human trafficking. <clears throat> you have to the way to end human trafficking is to make prostitution re- legal, and then have these have outlets where one you get health checks and two you have some sort some form of security. For these women that do that as a profession, that's the the two things you have to set up. And in, in what does my that got to do with the, the those human traffickers that take little kids though? Uh, Nineteen, almost oh a very big part of human trafficking is prostitution. I don't know if you knew that. No, I'm all right. My question is, but what like the the adults who are gonna go and and like get checked and you know be a prostitute or or, or worker, sex worker. Right, that has nothing to do with the kids. Kids are also being trafficking. Yes, they're going to get trafficked for sexual, whatever the reason is, but mostly it's sexual. But I'm saying, like, so for the, the the those human traffickers, you know, I honestly think they should deserve the death penalty. I don't think there should be any fucking any fucking court system or anything like that. To be honest, that's just my opinion. That's how I feel about it because that shit's worse than a drug dealer to me. 
to be honest, a sex trafficker, yeah. a human trafficker, that's worse than a drug dealer. I pop, don't think anybody would disagree with that. Pop that, that motherfucker a first. Person and put them in a situation where they could only fuck for the rest of their life or they get killed. I think most people would say that's worse than dealing drugs. Yeah, for sure. I, and, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I just, take. I just don't nah. think that like, uh, I don't think that, that uh, increasing the punishment is the way that you stop people from doing a thing though. I, I I think it might work for for certain. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think that like saying that like oh that's the death penalty. Like oh uh, the the fucking the the parks and recreation thing straight to jail. No, <laughs> you go you go to jail. Like I don't think that that's like the the solution to these problems though because that's not the reason these problems pop up. Crime tends to be an economic issue. You want to fix crime, fix the economic roots. Stop making it. Uh, stop making people. Not making people, but fix the people that feel like their only outlet, their only way to get by is to commit crimes to make money. Yeah. I just I just don't think that that a punishment actually like that increase in the punishment actually makes it less likely, especially you're talking about like human traffickers. Usually that's a big organization. What you're going to punish the one person like Pucci was saying, you're going to punish just the drug dealer. The people up top would just find that new person, a new desperate dude that needs to make some quick money, and they toss him right back into the machine. Wasn't that uh, Jeffrey Epstein or Epstein, whatever his name is? Uh, wasn't he? Did he have like sex trafficking girls too, or whatever like that in this whole thing too? And all these fucking owners. Yes, and... but but I, I can guarantee you that man was not actually out there like kidnapping young no, kids yeah. to to do that. He had a whole machine in place that that he had roots to. Yeah, you got fucking NFL owners and shit out there enjoying it. Like that's and the other boys. Don't what was get... Jeffrey Epstein even arrested for? I don't actually know. Was it for sex related things, or was that like a big rumor mill? And there was some other shit he was arrested for. That is not some information that I have ready to go. Honestly, I know. I know that he. I don't know if he got caught for this, but I know he had recruiters, like women that he paid, young women in high school that he paid to recruit other young women in high school, <clears throat> um, basically saying, "Hey, you know, you ever think about giving a massage? Uh, you know, this it pays really good. Sometimes it can get sexual stuff like that." But they'll tell these young women, like, "Hey, you can get two, three grand was in a few this. hours." And so he had he had a lot of recruiters um, that would recruit the woman for him. Which Sex is trafficking Gis is why he got arrested. Sorry, Gisling Maxwell was another like recruiter. Yep. Supposedly yeah, I, 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 his girl too. Or, or, uh, that's who. Yeah. That's who her name is, right? Maxwell. Max, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They got a whole Netflix thing on it too. By the way, it's all last night. So Speaking yeah, of Netflix, apparently things. it's about procuring prostitution from underage girls um yeah and, and like though he said he had a whole network for that i don't, I don't know it, it's uh it's it's complicated i don't think that the death penalty on things will actually reduce crime the way that we think that it will though or that people tell us that it will it might be more of a, like a fear tactic yeah for yeah, sure but like will it reduce like yeah. a thing to an to an extent that's worth it i guess like Death penalty is expensive too. Like that's like another. Like it costs a lot of money to kill people in this country. Mm -hmm. Well, you because um, there's an appeals process and you're sitting in prison. And I mean, the other side of what Trump has said is that he wants to reduce due process and he wants to get rid of some of these like these rights that we're supposed to have as Americans to uh, mm -hmm. to uh, fair trials. This is right. And moving towards uh, Judge Dredd, dude. Yeah, one thing though, I'm gonna take the conversation back a little bit, yeah. like because I feel like you didn't really, or well, the your response to Doey was like, if Doey's suggestion can't solve all problems, then it's a bad solution. Um, where, where he said make make prostitution legal oh. and and you know put it in a, a better situation and you'll solve a lot of the problems and then your response was but what about the child people that get sex yeah. trafficked yeah. and it's like cool we could do different things for them like but if you're if you could fix 85 percent of a problem with with a solution it's like you shouldn't throw it out because it didn't solve the extra 15 percent or whatever but i don't think I, sex uh, traffickers yeah. have to do anything with like grown-ass females or males 
trying to just what? sell their body for money, though. Have you ever I'm looked sorry. into sex trafficking? Yeah. Well, sorry, what did you just say, Tony? Maybe I misunderstood. I was saying, like, sex trafficking is when, like, I don't think, like, a, if, a, if a woman or a man, whoever, wants to go prostitute or sell themselves for money, I don't think that falls under, like, trafficking, sex, like, sex trafficking. Well, well, a lot, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the sex work in the United States is performed by people that have been human trafficked. I mean, like those massage parlors, like they uh, just caught, they caught that dude out in Florida at one of those, right? Was that Florida? Uh, I forget. It was yeah, that coach there's that they one caught. in Florida. It's in Palm Beach too. It's like in but, somewhere but, near Palm Beach. But yeah, those places are typically like like uh, filled with women that are not. The you know they, they were they were human trafficked to get there like they're they're not like living freely and choosing to do that work they were abducted and put into that line of work. Okay, yeah, I, w- I mean, I was I was when he and, said and that. I I mean, was... And I mean, sex trafficking t- it takes a lot of a lot of different ways too. Like part of part of fixing sex trafficking is making uh is, uh, is immigration law reform as well. Uh, because those coyotes down in Mexico, man, they'll they'll tell you they're going to take you across the border and they'll run with your money and they'll hold on to your your identification and you'll get stuck in a situation like that. That's yeah. a situation that happens. Yep. No, but yeah, I was just mostly talking about like because he was saying like how they can go get checked and just do their own job and not get arrested for it. That's why I was only talking directly more about like people who who choose that option not people who are forced that's where i was gearing to not yeah the whole thing. yeah in theory in theory it should help fix it because then you would have to be there'd be some kind of license or registration or some shit like that that you're you would talking have. in around professionals and you know what i mean They're, you're not you don't have like a fucking pimp that just you know what i mean like a lot of the time women need pimps for security and that's how that whole thing goes about and then they they also have recruiters and stuff like that but like once you start to take a lot of that away you give you empower these people um usually they don't need pimps anymore then there goes you know what i mean their source of like drugs and stuff like that you don't really know like how it's gonna change it but i feel like for the better um make all drugs legal Make oh. all uh, prostitution legal. Why do Absolutely. you make all drugs legal? Why? Because there's no reason for it to be legal. Illegal. There's no reason for it to be illegal. I don't understand why. So you think fentanyl is a drug that should be legal? Yeah, it should be legalized and it should be uh, through the government distributed. It's already being distributed by the government. But create a create a type of fentanyl medicine that doesn't that's not going to kill people. You know what I mean? It's gonna get people. You, you what, want the, it's gonna get people what they want. Yeah, absolutely. You want the government but, to create something that's better than fentanyl? Gov- not, not the government. But look how you have cannabis retailers and stuff like that. You have people that can look into this drug. Nobody's and say, dying hey, off of marijuana, if there's, bro. If there, if there's a, if there is a big demand for heroin, if there's a big demand for fentanyl, then create safe ways of using this drug. That's it create a safe space a place where you can use it and if you do overdose on it somebody can help you whether it be giving you narcan or afterwards you say i don't want that to happen to me again i want to stop using these drugs then they can help you get off of the drug as well i mean that that's that's the biggest part for me like that that's i i'm, I'm not 100 percent sold on every drug should be legal but if we had centers where you could do it, you could do drugs in a safe space and you could have those conversations with people about about uh, trying to get clean and trying to get through rehab, I guess not get clean, because apparently that's uh, not the way to word that anymore in the con- in like the current like drug rehabilitation like mindset. Um, but yeah, like if there were places where you could have those hard conversations and you could talk to people about your drug addiction, honestly. It should, in theory, reduce drugs, uh, drug usage, right? It should reduce, like, the, the chance of you dying to drugs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's a balance, though. Like, if I was walking down, uh, like, if people were able to just walk down the street and walk into a spot and buy heroin, do you think there'd be more or less heroin users? I like, don't know, because I don't think that the barrier that's stopping me from, like, becoming a heroin addict is that I don't have a good way to buy heroin. Sure, I, but there I, are I, experimental I, people that just don't 
you know, they're experimental people that just don't have immediate access or don't know where to go <laughs> to get something. That I yeah. think there will be more marijuana smokers now than there were before. Now that it's legal, that I don't know. That just seems obvious to me. I, w- I would um, probably agree with that one. Like, but I don't. I don't know. Is that a problem or not? I think with well, some drugs it is a problem. Well, yeah, he, like, he's he's just taking it that well, same line of thought to like other drugs. Like if coke were legal, are we going to see everyone's going to be all keyed up all day, or we can the, see a, the prof, the professor from Columbia University says that he does heroin recreationally. Yeah, I mean there is like no like there's people that can work and do their day to day and do drugs like cocaine and heroin. I've I've seen doc. I see some videos or they people say like, yeah, I've been on this and I'll go back to work like nothing. I think that's fucking wild. First off, right? It, it Especially is, for a doctor, you know. To it, do- it is. It is interesting. Some shit like that. I knew this. Uh, I knew this guy one time that his drug of choice was ketamine. What the fuck? Yeah, is that? It, it's, it's like a horse uh, it's like a horse tranquilizer, and he would just trank himself up and just sit on his couch and trip, and that was his it's preferred club- drug of choice. It's what also a fuck? club drug. Like when you go to the clubs, you you get K. It's called Special K. Mm-hmm. I'm good off all that. That's cool. I, and I, I knew- actually heard that at, that they're using it now for rehabilitative uh, practice in um, in like a hospital setting. They can get you to unaddict uh, people who are addicted. It helps them re- like not yeah get off of drugs stuff like that. Apparently, it's good in some ways, and we would have never known that if it wasn't for like human use. You know what I mean? So like sometimes mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta use the drug and see like who would have known fucking horse tranquilizer. <laughs> imagine, imagine the first dude that like went to his doctor and was like, "Doc, I got great news." He's like, "I've stopped doing heroin now." He's like, "So great, how'd you do that?" He's like. Well, I started smoking ketamine. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard it's easier to get off than heroin. Special K. Yeah. That's why it's a good it, it's like a good way to get off of other drugs. It's just crazy. Oh, I'm just think, not in that camp. I think there's a balance and like I think there's a lot of benefits to making drugs illegal. Like there's going to be better regulation. You're probably going to get less like, you know, bad drugs out and about there's probably going to be um more help available people that are addicted to these things are going to feel more comfortable coming out and saying they're addicted to these things and trying to get help and things like that like i think there's a lot of those benefits like i would i would want to focus on how can we get these benefits while you know, minimizing the bad effects of this stuff and I, i don't know something about just opening the floodgates for everything to be legal feels really uncomfortable to me no yeah i mean i just i, I like i said i kind of i agree with that 100 percent. but at the same time you know whatever like I, I don't think opening the floods is the best way and I, like i said i don't even think cocaine's that bad either but eh, who am i i've never done cocaine so i don't know how that affects people or anything like that I mean, it's it's definitely an interesting conversation. I, I like the idea of of legalizing all drugs. Like like Bucho said, I think there's a lot of benefits, but yeah, it's just hard for. Me. Yeah, I don't know. That's just crazy. I never even heard of this hand this horse tranquilizer. Oh, so. all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for our final topic, a little bit lighter lighter topic, not so hard in the uh, drugs and stuff, but it's a good one. Respecting your parents and forgiving them for their mistakes, you know, because parents ain't perfect, you know, especially me being a parent now. I know I'm not perfect. I'm learning every day new things, new ways to prove things and as a father and teaching wise. So what do you guys like? What do you what do you guys think about uh, respecting your parents and their mistakes? Do you think there are things that your parents cannot come back from? Like there are uh, things that happen in your past that are too, yes, that go too far. That are like I can't forgive them for that. Um, how do you work through those things? Yeah, there's 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 cutoffs. Everybody has. A... I, I think you lop those people out of your life, unfortunately. Um, 
not usually my answer. I think having a family and all that kind of stuff is important for most people and it's beneficial to most people. But like if you got a parent that like sexually molested you as a kid, like I don't see how you're coming back from that one, like in a healthy way. Um or a parent that like physically abused you and you know, things in your siblings, things like that. Uh, you know, some dude beating on your mom every day. Like I, I have, I, ha- I would have a very hard time. Being yeah, I cool. You know, with a parent like that. Yeah, I think it's possible to maybe you as a per, you as an individual, maybe you can work up to forgiveness the situ- of that situation. I don't know that for me, if I were able to do that, that the relationship would ever be what I would consider like a a normal, healthy relationship. That would be like you get a one ten minute call every week or something like would oh, be, yeah. it would be like heavy, heavy limits. Do you Did feel like maybe drug abuse uh, stuff like that is more mild? It could be like excused or you think you could work through that drug abuse. Like, yeah, maybe if they're willing to like look a for parent help. who's a drug addict. Yeah. If they're Sorry, willing to. Know. Yeah, if they're willing to get help and change for their kid or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you can come back from it, but if they're just constantly doing the same shit and nothing's changing, at some point you have to just be done with it. You know what I mean? Like, just, uh, like, I don't know. I think it doesn't matter what the relationship with the person is. If you have a person that is just bringing nothing but toxicity into your life, as Pucho said, chop them up, cut them right out of your life. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like with drug abuse is a little more difficult because it's like, a thing that has a hold over a person mm-hmm. and like i don't really agree with with like the characterization that tony's saying is like like i don't know like if you're just not getting help and you just keep doing the same thing it's like well fortunately it's, it's not that simple for drug addicts like it's not like they could just wake up one day and stop like that doesn't work that way for a lot of people that are on drugs like there's a lot of trials, there's a lot of attempts, there's a lot of failures, like, um, yeah, I'm saying, but I think everybody's entitled to their own feelings, so, like, I, if I had people that I knew that was, like, a friend, and he's drugged the fuck out all the time, and he's in, you know, he's a, a risk for, like, stealing shit from you to buy drugs and stuff like that, it's like, who could blame me for being, like, I ain't trying to fuck with this guy no more, like, you know what I mean, like, I don't know. I I I could see both sides there. Where where, you know, if you know, if a person gets better and things like that, of course, you know, it seems like you know you should be able to like you know look past certain faults. But but I mean, if somebody chose not to, I wouldn't blame them. Like they're the person that's dealing with it. Like like a parent that's not there, that wasn't there for them, and all that kind of shit. Like I don't know. Oh yeah, and I, and I was most of saying like when I said like um seeking help and stuff there's some people that don't want to help they'll tell nah i ain't doing that shit fuck i don't need that those are the type of people i'm talking about like i get it like yeah but they might feel like that way because they're hooked but no i know but people that are hooked some of them they do you see them wave back and forth and like you know and i understand drugs changes a dude's mind somebody's mindset to a point where they're not thinking straight or or you know aggressively or whatever or very defensively when people ask for them to look for help but still, though, it's like at some point you have to cut these people off. Like everybody's cut off is different. You know what I mean? Your cut off obviously is abuse, molesting. You just, nope, that's done with. You know what I mean? Some people won't see that like that. Some people be like, no, he he was, you know, he wasn't fucked up. He's seeking. He's this and that. You know. But I would I would cut off a parent for maybe less lesser offenses. Like you know what I mean? Like if you just just don't know how to. Uh, speak or like uh not speak but like just don't know how to interact and 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 just always just toxic and not just an abuse way not on drugs just not giving a shit yeah i'll cut you off too like fuck out of here i'm not dealing with that shit like if anybody who just constantly brings that headache to you your mother your father or whatever fuck out of here like even if like one of your fathers or mothers don't we're never around then all of a sudden your life's good and they want to come back around that's a hard choice for you to decide whether you're not like you should deal with them me personally i'd be like nigga i didn't need like i didn't need you those 15 years fuck out of here i don't need you now i don't need your attention i don't need your affection i don't need none of that shit if you feel bad live with the decisions you made as a human being to not fuck with me simple that's that's how i would feel i don't everybody's different you know what i mean but yeah, I ain't I ain't out here looking for your fucking handouts now. 
Yeah, yeah I think go- that's very harsh. But I think, um, especially with parents, uh, going back on the topic, like respecting your parents and forgiving them and things that are forgivable. I think a lot of the stuff that we go through with our parents uh, when we're kids and stuff, a lot of this stuff could be forgiven. And I think um, I think we also pick up some toxic toxic habits like growing up. And I think one of the best things I did was uh, I kind of looked at myself. It was it was like 29. It was like 29, 28. It was when it started happening. And I really started to dissect myself and say, you know, why is the relationship with my mom or my dad the way it is? And really started to look at myself like, am I the issue here? Is or like who is really what's the problem when it comes down to like because I, I had a rocky relationship with both of my parents for a long time. And I would say now I'm in the best position I've ever been, especially with my mom, my grandma and stuff like that. Um, My father, I've come to terms with a lot of these relationships. And I think I think you really have to want to change the relationship you're having with them. And I think a lot of that can't happen while you're upset. I think you're going to get upset a lot. I think it's going to take some arguments. It's going to take work to get to a better place if you are having issues with your parents or like your relationship isn't the greatest um i think you got to come to a a place where both of you guys can voice your opinions and you're gonna have to voice them several times it's gonna take you know for me it took several times it took a lot of arguments um but it you know i think fixing the relationship with you and your parents and getting on the right wavelength with them where it's not always an argument and it's not always a yelling competition and because that that happened that that tends to happen you know what i mean you start arguing and whoever's talking the loudest wins you know what i mean like that's how that's how some of those conversations go so i think um I think dissecting that relationship in yourself and why are you so combative with them and maybe coming coming at it from like, hey, this is a clean slate conversation. We're not going to bring anything from the past. We're not. We're only going to talk about how to fix what we need to fix. Is, and that, I think- com- is that conversation possible? With your par- with your parents, because I think that with like other individuals, that conversation is definitely a lot easier. With your parents, though, it's so hard. we're not we're not going to bring up shit from the past. It's like I was a kid, you were a grown ass adult for a yeah. lot of these situations that are my problem. Yeah, I think you have to have those conversations, and I think once you have those conversations and you kind of air out those grievances, and they they are aware of your grievances. Whether they apologize for them or not, I think you have to have those conversations and those arguments. But I think after a while, you have to come to a place where it's like, okay, we aired each other's grievances out. Um, I think it's important that you guys apologize, like genuinely, or you know what I mean? However it goes, I think you have to have those conversations. Those things have to happen. Hey, you were a parent. You used bad judgment. You made a lot of bad calls. And you have to own up to it. I've got a flip on this. Do y'all think that you have to respect your parents? Hell yeah. Like, as a default, for sure. Yeah, as a I default, you should just respect your parents? Depends yeah. on the relationship. I think so. Yeah. Like, it depends. Like, I think if your parents are a piece of shit, yeah. then yeah, maybe they don't, they don't warrant your respect. But I think as a default, I, whenever I see people talking to their parents like shit, I automatically categorize this person as a future piece of shit until I'm proven otherwise. That's how I always think of it. If I see somebody talking to their mom, like yelling at them, cursing at them, shit like that, I'm like, I'm like this. I, I'm always like, oh, God, there's either a lot of context missing or this person's a piece of shit. I'm o- huh. and, 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 So it's either neutral or bad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's I don't know. I, I I think as a default, I think people should respect their parents. But yeah, but I ha- I also think that has a lot to um, do with how how you was brought up too, though, right? Like how your parents spoke to you. It's just it, like without them even noticing, it it uh it latches on to your child. You know what I mean? Like it it literally like if you if it's normal in the household to be screaming, yelling, cursing, it normalizes that in your child. And that child growing up, that's normalized to them. You know what I mean? Like 
And then as a grown up, you make that conscious effort now to either change it, I guess. Um, and it's, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard because it's, you you have this relationship with this person now that's affected by your years of growing up and it's hard for you to change. Almost like a drug addict, right? It's almost hard for you to change. Like It's almost like not even like a drug addict because that's that's actually different but you know it's just hard for you to to get over that and, and to try to change it but you can it's not it's not like you can't but that's how that happens that's how like someone like you you was probably wasn't raised in a household like that so it's different from your aspect you're looking at it like damn but you're also understanding like damn there's a lot of content behind it i don't know that's probably why they act like that with each other yeah so, um, as far as like the respect I, don't know, man. You- I think if you got your two parents in the house and they're paying bills, and they're taking care of you, and they're feeding yeah. you. I don't give a fuck. I don't care how they talk to you. I think if you talk to them like a piece of shit, I think that makes you a shitty person. Uh, <laughs> unless, of course, there's a lot of context missing. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I can't get it by. I can't get behind the part of it. It doesn't matter how they talk to you. If yeah, you that, talk to them yeah. like that, that's no, 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 Tony. No, no, no. Tony's saying that like <laughs> if you grow up in a household where people yell at each other and people cur- like my parents cursed my entire life, like mm-hmm. right, and so we grew up cursing. Like you know what I mean? I've had a. I've been in trouble since a little ass kid for having a potty mouth or. <laughs> or whatever, like in school and shit like that. It's like sure, like that, like yeah, you're gonna pick up the habits of your parents and stuff like that. I ain't never cursed at them, not not one. Like I've never spoken to them yeah. like that. I, I was um, I was gonna say like that. That's kind of similar to me. Like my my dad's a truck driver. My dad can swear like no one else. He has <laughs> reserves where he's got weird swears. He's, he 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 smashes his hand with a hammer sometimes, and he yells San Antonio, which is just a fucking city. Like it's San Antonio, just, <laughs> just a city San down Antonio. the road. <laughs> <laughs> but the way that man says it, it's a full on swear word. That's a four letter word when he says it. So I, I swear around my parents a lot. I swear in front of my parents a lot. I don't swear at my parents. Yeah. But some people would define that as me not having respect for my parents. Yes. Yeah, sure. I've got yeah. lots of members of my family that would define that as me not having respect for my parents. How yeah. dare you say that word in front of your mom? Or even <laughs> questioning your parents. It's, that's also a thing. Like some people, like I have a coworker that told me, like, yo, if I even raise my voice just a little bit i would fucking get destroyed by my father or whatever i'm be like damn that's crazy i even had some people be and, like yo like and does does that mean that that person respected their parents more because they wouldn't raise their voice around their parents or i think it was just mostly fear right i think as a i think especially as a father um when you have a young man um teaching them to respect women and like not get you know check yourself when you are talking to a woman because this is you know what i mean um i think the relationship young men have you they have to learn that they'll try to challenge their mother like if their mother is one of their siblings in a way and i think you see that a lot in like single parent situations i see you see that the child challenging the mother a lot because there's they don't they need that other parent whether it be woman or male uh they need that other there just to check the checks and balances you know what i mean so i think um uh, a lot of our our problems when it came to me and like my brother and stuff like that is that they were we were kind of unchecked And we needed somebody to check us there. And my mom wasn't around a lot of the time because she was working. And you got to come to terms. Like, my mom did the best she could with what she had. And, like, yeah, that means that a lot of things for me didn't happen. But she made what could happen happen. And I have to just be okay with that. And that's something else that I learned. Like, you can't change your past. Like, no matter what. There's no changing it. Your past is your past. It's never going to change the outcome. But, you know, you can talk to them about it and say, hey, when this happened, it really sucked. And when this happened, it made me feel this way and kind of hash those hash those things out. And I think it leaves you in a better place. I think if you can talk, I think getting your parent out of the denial stage is hard. 
Because it's very denial-based. Oh, no, I never did that to you. Oh, you felt some type of way. Like, like they'll feel offended that you could ever feel this way about them. But I think getting past that denial stage, and I think even you as a child need to get over the denial stage where maybe you're, uh, you, you have to get over this. You kind of got to get over this, but you can't get over it without talking and hashing it out. From um, another perspective, though, kids have a weird fucking memory like i worked with kids for a while i I, and i obviously grew up around a bunch of friends i'd have friends where i've never seen their mother whip on them ever and maybe you know maybe their parents had hit them a few times right and but they'll be like yeah my mom like with belts and this and that and like you know they probably got whipped two times in their life for doing some of the worst shit you could think of and their takeaway now is like yeah my mom used to beat me like that, like where, whereas like I've been around people, I've seen their mother whip their ass on a weekly, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm like, you know, I would think, all right, this person gets beat and this person doesn't. But like from a kid's perspective, they would have the view like, yeah, my mom be whipping, my mom whipped on me all the time. And it's like, the, like, I think there's, I feel like sometimes there's from a parent's perspective, it's like, yeah, I had times where I made these errors. Right. But the perception is like i did this all the time type of thing and it's like i feel like sometimes they're denying like because i think if they did some of these things all the time that makes them a bad parent and you're basically trying to call them a bad parent whether they were or weren't that's a tough that's a tough pill to swallow like if my kid grows up and says that i'm a bad dad like that would suck you know what i mean because i try to be a good parent you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and you can't Um, change anything about that you're like if, 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 if your daughter's telling you this at 25 it's like well how can, how can I change that? <laughs> yeah, no. And I, like and also too like with forgiving your parents. Like um I've I've dealt with a lot of shit. Like you know, my parents went through a divorce and shit because of personal reasons among themselves and they were getting well actually they were getting close to getting a divorce. Um and that shit sucks, bro, cuz it's like, you know, like uh like my dad coming to visit and shit on the weekends or whatever. It's like sucks like damn, why are you leaving? Like know what i mean like in my head as a child it's like mad at my mom for like my dad just taking off you know what i mean and um sorry and that shit like people don't understand like some weird way that kid is registering that shit and he's gonna pick on somebody and hate somebody for it you know what i mean without even knowing it's just like uh you know and that's something that uh obviously you know as a as a kid and now an adult, how I see how that affects me and how I move a certain way too with my parents. But it's just like um that's what I don't want for my kid, you know what I mean? But it's kinda kinda shit now. But I, you just have to raise them in a way to let them and understand when they're of age to explain things to them and say why things are like this. Cause as a kid I had questions, but I never asked them. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think that's on the parents though. Yeah. It's on the like parents it should, to it sit should down. be on the parents yep. to explain their situation to the kids, even before you think they're ready to understand it. Because kids are they're more introspective than I think people give them credit for. Like they for think sure. about things, they wonder, yeah. they, you know, they're concerned about, they have worries, all that type of shit. Mom, like I think if you if parents split up, I think it's on both of those parents, a to co-parent in a healthy manner not shit you know how many people i grew up around where i would see parents shit talking each other's like their parents their, the others their, their, their you know the other parent and shit like that it's like that shit ain't healthy at all your kids pick up on that they i've seen moms just straight like just straight gaslight the shit out of children and be like yep my dad's a deadbeat piece of shit who don't care about me and it's <laughs> like it ain't like that and then when the kids start acting that way then of course, then the then the other parents gonna start feeling a type of way, and then maybe they don't come around as much or show as much love, and then it becomes kind of like a self fulfilling thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, so yeah, I think like you shouldn't do that, and you should be over communicating the current situation, you know, explaining that you know you're safe, mm-hmm. you still got two parents, it ain't like a traditional household, but you know we're gonna make it work, and nobody hates each other, nobody left because of you. Like you're yep. not the problem here, like all that type of shit. Those are the types of things that kids be thinking about. Like, yeah, and those are the um, things. Like, uh, it's definitely going to be a question and a conversation one day. But it's like, you know, you 
like all the shit I had as a kid, I'm gonna make sure that someone speaks to me, like or I speak to my kid. You know, I'm gonna make sure because I know how that affected me. So you know, I'll make sure that I do my best to explain it and and go through the whole steps because it's you know. At the end of the day, like co-parenting is got to be a healthy thing between both parties. You can't, you know, because that shit is a that's a mission on itself. Like you know, you can't have hate for, for somebody, sure. especially teach because you're teaching your kid that shit without knowing yep. you're teaching them that. So, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I think I think uh, by default, like uh, respect your parents until you have a reason not to. Uh, and yeah. I don't think that you're obligated to to forgive your parents or even have those conversations. If you had a shitty childhood, I don't think you have that you have any obligation to have that conversation with your parents and try to fix the relationship. If someone's toxic, you can just leave them the fuck alone. It doesn't matter if they're your parents. Doesn't matter if it's your sister. Doesn't fucking matter. Someone's toxic. Yeah. You don't. You have no obligation to that person to forgive them or to have those tough conversations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, in Spanish culture, a lot of parents feel owed um, stuff like worst. that. Like, uh, you know, how you can't speak to me like that. Oh, you can't tell me to leave you alone. How dare you? <laughs> Just, you know what I mean? How dare you tell me to stop talking to you? I'll speak to you as much as I want. <laughs> so you do get a lot of those conversations but i feel like uh you know dealing with the problems uh like 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 mateo said you don't you're not you're not obligated to do any of this and if it's less toxic for you to do that i probably suggest you do that you know what i mean um but i think there is if you can have it with your parent i think having that relationship evolve is a very beautiful thing you know what I mean? When you can, when you can not hold all those things against your parent, and you find a new way to deal with them and a new way to, um, it, it's, it's helped me a lot. It's helped me a lot. Um, so I, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel sometimes. When you know, when you can get to a place of understanding, and you can both come to an understanding where one person says, you know, I'm really sorry I did that to you that, you know, I understand what you're saying now. It's a, it's really good. It, I really appreciate coming to terms with a lot of that. Yeah. It's always room for one up in yourself in life. Yeah. Never Evolving. too late. Yeah. I wonder not to prolong the conversation. I wonder why, like how some, like for me, right, I have had my issues with my parents, right? Um, you know, tons of things throughout life, right? Mm -hmm. But I, after adulthood and things like that, I've never really thought of like asking for forgiveness for things or, or like, I don't know. It, it's interesting to me how certain like things in different people's lives impact them differently, I guess. Like even two different people going through a very similar thing. Um, you know, one set of people could have that baggage for the rest of their lives. Um, I was about you know. to say that even with my siblings, uh, I, I don't have I've, I've never had any issues with my parents. My parents and I have a very good relationship. Um, some of my siblings don't have quite that same level of relationship because of different experiences they had with my parents as children. So it's uh, it is interesting to see that dynamic that like even with the same parents, you can have two totally different perspectives on how good or bad they were as parents. Yeah, it's, it's, it has to be something like a chemical balance or something in your head of how you process certain actions or reactions. You know what I mean? Like not like because if I see something, I'm not going to react. Doughboy is not going to react the same way I'm reacting. You know what I mean? Same with you, you guys, vice versa. It's like certain shit. It's like a filter in your brain. Like shit pass through it all day long. But, you know, it's just like, well, I pick up on this. Oh, fuck this. Like, that's all it is. It's just. I also think everybody's different. And, like, you know, the way my mom treated my brothers were different than the way she treated me. Um, a lot of that could just be because of the ways that we were, you know? Like, one, you know, one sibling gets more attention than the other. And it's like maybe they needed more attention than, than another person, you know? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's like, yeah, like Mateo's point is like, you know, 
same parents, you know, all these people growing up together, and then you end up with some people that feel like they had great parents and other people that feel like they had shit parents. And it's like, that's kind of interesting to me. I don't know. It seems no. kind of fucked up. Like Only thing to do is we have to, uh, we're going to do a parent and sibling swap on the one up podcast for one week. <laughs> we're all going to swap parents and siblings. <laughs> to be disastrous. To be interesting. And we're going to rank them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think one thing one thing I've never gotten over real quick before we go over was my father when I was like 18 or 19 like he wasn't really ever in my life. Like I, I met up with him up here and he's like you're a man now. You have to take care of yourself. And I'm like I'm fucking 18. I'm like I'm barely I just got <laughs> And he's like yeah, you have to work a job and pay your own place and that is not normal at all. Like in any other um society or community i've seen especially in my job i've seen 40 50 60 year maybe not 60 but 40 40 year old people with their grandparent parents they're they're like 80 years old they're helping them move in they're helping them leave um that job never stops of being a parent um and i think the way that spanish people particularly view as like you're 18 you're a man now i think that shit's bullshit i think that shit is so destructive to our society um, well definitely though i don't know i've known you for, for a long time now and you before 18 was living like not living on your own but you pretty much you cooked your own food you did your grocery shopping some days you know what i mean like yeah. You was literally living by yourself, not really, but you were. You know what I mean? I like so. It's like for your father to tell you that shit, especially when he wasn't around for a brief time or whatever. It like it sucks. It leaves a really shitty taste. In I would have told them, "Bitch, I've been a man. Damn, that's what you talking like, about? I've been doing this. Bitch, <laughs> like, I've been cooking meals. I've been working. I'm going to school. Like yeah, you went to school. Here, you had a job. Like you was doing shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like for your father who, who wasn't around. Like that's pretty much like a slap in your face, but that's maybe yeah, his, that's weird. It's like maybe yeah. that's his brain set of trying to prepare you for the real world. But I've, ne I've he never gotten shit. over that. Though. That's one of the things that really like bothered me. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, but. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've stuck through this episode of ups and downs and different views and different topics, because we're all over the place today on this episode, yeah. don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, share, post with your family, leave comments. Gonna be very interested on you guys yelling at us about that game topic that we had to see yeah. if you guys would have guessed it. <laughs> I can't believe you guys didn't get Resident Evil. I feel like the Resident Evil one should have been so much was easier. Hard, bro. Yeah. You know, there was a point in that conversation when it popped into my head. Oh, we just talking about Resident Evil, and then Tony asked something that just broke my brain <laughs> and it vanished. <laughs> Think of, is that from the ninety? From the nineties? <laughs> the year nineteen ninety. <laughs> and then he's like, the nineties. It's like, hold up. The yes. chip bag, man. That's gonna be a, <laughs> that's right. gonna be a joke. The chip bag, the that's Cheeto big. shit. I can not believe that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, always remember, go one up yourself. Never too late. Peace. Or seven up yourselves. <laughs> Six up. Peace. Peace.